As soon as you boot up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge after you get past the typical corporate logo intros, this happens. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in the Hot Shell, <laughs> Oh yes! And with that, regardless of how well the game plays, you know you're in for a good fun time. Heavily inspired by the classic 80s cartoons that completely defined a generation, especially me. Yep, that's me on Christmas Day, 1990, shell suit and bum bag intact, holding a copy of the home computer Amstrad port of the terrible game, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, before I spilt my drink on the password section of the manual, butchering any future attempts at playing this game. But never fear, young DJ Slope, because 32 years later, another company are going to make another Turtles video game. They're going to send it to you for free for the purposes of review, but of course, it's your review and you're not going to have that free game cloud your judgement. Now, of course, you've got plenty of games in between and even before this time, but this Shredder's Revenge is easily the most excited fans have been for a new game in the series since the 80s and the 90s. And I hate to say it, guys, but no longer are you going to be arguing whether the original arcade release or the Turtles in Time game is best because now we have Shredder's Revenge to add to that mix and, to some, this is the very best Turtles game ever released. And... I think I agree. Let's kick some shell! As stated, the game takes heavy inspiration from the 80s cartoon series, with sprinklings of elements found in those classic games throughout and, of course, more than its fair share of quality of life improvements. When comparing this new Turtles game with the originals, similarities are of course here. I mean, it's the same genre, but this time, the game feels more zoomed out and with it being widescreen, you have a lot more of the play field to maneuver about in. Because of this and because the Turtles are ninjas apparently, although don't tell seven-year-old British me that, the game is a lot faster than those titles. It's very much its own thing, feeling closer to a mix between castle crashes and fight and rage for the hard hardcore brawler fans out there that know their stuff, you never walk in this game. As soon as the game starts up, you see the cartoonish civilians run out of the building, you see Shredder there disappearing, and you go up against the first set of foot soldiers, and you do it with ninja speed. It always felt good if you hit two, three, or dare I say it, four enemies at once in something like Streets of Rage or Final Fight, but here you can take down entire groups of enemies before dodging through the middle of them and taking down a second group or running towards the next area. From beginning to end, this game is absolutely manic, way more than any other beat-em-up I've played in recent years, and that's a good thing. It makes it stand out in a quickly filling up brawler based indie world that of course .mu have been leading the way with with the resurrection of Streets of Rage, the world's greatest beat em up series. <laughs> yes, Streets of Rage is still the best, feel free to write down below what series you think should own that title. Regardless, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is a completely different slice of pizza. It's not about precision timing or combo gaining, yes these are obviously in the game, but for the most part it's about dodging, jumping around the screen and taking out each enemy with insane speed and most importantly feeling bloody awesome whilst doing so at first. You see, once you've mastered the attack, dodge and attack again maneuver, it's pretty much all you're going to be doing on loop for the first half of the game. Which is odd, you have a vast array of move sets at your disposal, yet you are not really forced to experiment with them until the second half of the game. Sure, I had to change up my attack, dodge and attack move to attack, jump and attack from time to time, but honestly very little more than that. In fact, as you move into those later parts of the game, you will find that this move set will work on virtually all enemies just as long as you spam the dodge a few more times before, during and after. And even though this does sound easy, which it 
definitely is. I completed this game all the way through on my first playthrough without losing any full set of lives on any level. It's still frantic enough for you to never feel bored whilst doing so. Your eyes are on the action constantly during the game's short three hour time frame, so much so that it's unlikely you will be able to take in much of any of the gorgeous world that Adam Marion and his team at Tribute Games has so brilliantly crafted. And since we are talking about the art style, what are your guys' thoughts about this being a pixelated game? It's strange to me that Street of Rage 4 would move from the beautiful pixel art style of the original trilogy into the equally stunning but still very different hand-drawn European art style that we got with the sequel, yet Shredder's Revenge, a game that is inspired by the 87 series and even has the original voice cast from that series, and it has an intro that looks like this, has decided to go pixel heavy. Again, it's still stunning, but on a personal note, I think I would prefer to live in that alternative timeline that featured a game that looked like the original TV show that it's so desperately trying to replicate. Similar to how South Park did it with their games, I suppose. Hey, it's just my opinion. What do you guys think? With that said, since its heyday, the Turtles have had plenty of reimaginings when it comes to TV shows, and even though this one is here to please us 30 to 40 year olds, it's super apparent that the animation style is actually tailored to all ages, no matter what version you grew up with. Certain poses and interactions will indeed tug on the heartstrings, it's what they're there for, and yes, they definitely succeed in doing just that, but it's when you look at the enemies themselves that you realise that this game isn't just for you. Almost every single Foot Clan soldier looks like they're getting hilariously kicked in the nuts, and multiple times in each level you'll see them minding their own business, performing duties that help them blend into the real world, before joining into the fight. It's hilarious and it keeps the game fresh for players of all ages. It was an awesome moment playing the game with my son watching and him pointing out what was going on with the enemies, it made what is an obviously very repetitive game into a real feast for the eyes of passers-by. Even if the level do slightly blend together a little for the player due to the frantic nature, watching others play does at least give those environments the respect they deserve. In short, the game is stunning, albeit a little bit too repetitive with a few iconic set pieces within its 16 levels, and the way the game feels is also really, really good, but again it too is a little too repetitive, only really forcing you to experiment in the later parts of the game. Thankfully, if you ask me, it's the multiple difficulty levels, the online play, the arcade mode, and I suppose the collectibles found within this game that are going to keep bringing you back time and time again. The game has a lot to unlock. In story mode, you can go back and revisit older levels, attempting to pass certain achievements, and all the way through the game, you'll find plenty of friends from the show, many of which I had completely forgotten about until I saw them in this game again. In fact, little side note here, I would have loved if there were fact sheets talking about who these characters actually were in this game that you find along the way. Heck, it's been a hell of a long time since I've watched those cartoons, and I really would like to explore the backstory of characters like this. Either way, these guys give you mini challenges in return for points that unlock new moves or slight energy and health upgrades, because as we all know, if you want to keep people interested in a game like this, it's RPG mechanics that are gonna do it. Leveling up each of the Turtles, Splinter, April and Casey is just super addictive. Which finally brings us to the soundtracks. I'm going to give this its own section entirely in this review because, quite simply, not only are the classic 2D Brawler Turtle games some of the best ever, but when it comes down to the classic chiptune music, the soundtracks are also some of the absolute best in the business too. It was super important for this game to have a kick-ass soundtrack, and thankfully, it does have a kick-ass soundtrack, although... I do question whether this particular soundtrack works for this particular game. Starting off, you got Mr. Bungle himself, Mike Platoon of Faith No More fame, lending his skills for the iconic opening. Besides the big name, I don't really see the relevance besides simply just having a big name attached, but hey, it's cool. A nice rendition, and he definitely did a good job. 
Anton Carraza does probably one of the most fitting tracks in the entire game with his Mutants Over Broadway rap track. Really, really good when you see this one, guys. The Johnny Atma track, aka GA Metal, is seriously pumping and it fits in perfectly well with its fast 80s themed rock track in the Panic in the Sky level. Apologies to Mega Ran, mate. I absolutely adore your work, but I didn't find your track in this game. I'm sure if I play for it a few more times, I'll realize what track you did, and I'm sure it's absolutely great. Of course, the big, big one featuring Raekwon the Chef and Ghostface Killer from the bloody Wu-Tang Clan. And no, I'm not going to be spoiling this bit, but when it does drop in just the right moment, oh my God, guys, it seriously works and it's quite a memorable gaming moment. It's so damn impressive. But again, I don't really see the relevance of having these guys involved besides having a big name attached. Still, everyone involved in this particular track, T-Lopes included, you all did incredible work here. What I find weird about all of this is if they were going to be going down this collaborator route then they probably should have done it for the entire soundtrack because the other 75% of the soundtrack was done by the awesome T. Lopes. For those that don't know, T. Lopes is an absolute legend, creating what is, in my opinion, some of the most Sega-infused music ever. This soundtrack is more of that, so of course, being a bit of a Sega nerd, I am happy. Heck, I even spent 75 three pounds and 11 pence insane money to get this soundtrack which as stated is 75 percent him the problem is i question if he was right for this particular game it's such a weird mix of artists that don't really belong on a turtle soundtrack and super for the most part jazzy sonic chiptune music too again i love all of these artists i suppose a great way of putting it is that prodigy are one of the greatest bands in the world in my opinion but would I get them to make a new Final Fantasy soundtrack? Of course not. I love me some T-Lopes music, but I question if he was right for this job. He did his best of fusing his typical Sega-style music with the earlier 80s-style games, but besides the odd track, all I heard when playing this was catchy Sonic Mania 2 jingles and not classic Turtles music. Also, if we are getting vocal-heavy rap tracks on this particular soundtrack, wouldn't it have been easier, cheaper, and probably more fit, no, definitely more fitting to have Vanilla Ice involved? But I suppose then again, we would have a soundtrack with Wu-Tan Clan and Vanilla Ice on the same CD or vinyl. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't work actually. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Look, at the end of the day, what we have here is still an incredibly solid package. A very, very good game that sadly, you know, a tad too easy and those collectibles, I mean, come on guys, try a little harder. I found every single collectible pretty much without trying on my first playthrough of this game in single player and I'm guessing everybody watching when they eventually get this game will do the same thing. I love the arcade mode, I love the different moves the characters have, I simply love this game, faults included, and even with its slightly too repetitive nature, I'm still very happy with my incoming signature edition and my vinyl import purchase. Damn, that was an expensive day. But it's all worth it because I see this as a game that I will come back to time and time again. Tribute games, great job. If you're watching, stop watching and go and make another game just like this using any one of these properties.